Hey everyone, it's Dylan from Modern Reviews. Back again, another week, another Game of Thrones episode. We're just gonna hop right into it. This is season six, episode seven, The Broken Man. Once again, this week, not a huge episode. We're taking a break. Some things did happen. We're gonna talk about it. But let's get into this tiny details first. Just starting things off, we had a tiny, tiny scene with Theon, with him and his sister, they're at a dock. Basically, he's still feeling like shit because of the whole thing, so, Basically, Citra gives him a confidence boost and tells him that we're going to go and make a pact with Daenerys before our uncle can. That's pretty much that scene. So I just kind of wanted to get that little bit out of the way because there's a lot of other stuff going on that's way bigger and more important. And for once, we're actually going to have Jon and Sansa as a start, starting point. On this episode, very quick scenes with them. There were a few, but very quick. It's basically just them going to the different houses, trying to get them to side with their cause to take back Winterfell. So they go to the Mormons, the, all the other ones. The main one they focused on was the Mormons. Well, yes, they did manage to gain support. They don't really, they didn't really gain that many men to fight. So Sansa thinks that, hey, might as well write to Baelish, get those Vale soldiers over here. So, I mean, that's why I think she's writing to. I mean, that seems like the logical choice, but you know, Game of Thrones, never know. From what I can tell, I feel like Sansa's going to call on Baelish to use the Knights of the Vale for the fight for Winterfell. And also, we kind of get a little bit of fallout from Rob. Um, a lot of the houses still aren't too happy about what happened with Rob and that he got murdered. He got their freaking people murdered. The fr a freaking 10 year old is in charge of the Mormons because the old guy died because of Rob. So, good to see that there's a little hostility and bitterness, even though they do think that the Starks are really who's in charge. We also have some stuff with Marjorie. Uh, still not feeling this King's Land and stuff, but you know what? Whatever. Bas basically, I think she's playing the High Sparrow, and I think she's playing this whole Ma Faith Militant thing, because, yes, she seems like she's being a good, good, faithful lady, um, reading the scriptures, trying to talk her grandmother Olena to leave, but she gives her something. She gives her a paper with their um, house mark, the rose on it, so basically signifying that this is who I am. I'm always going to support this house. You can go, I got it. So basically, I think that Marjorie has some big ideas and some big plans. No idea what they are. Don't even have an idea, but they're going to be big. We also had a, just had a quick scene with Cersei and Olena, basically just Olena telling Cersei that she fucked up royally, and that was pretty much the whole scene. Well, that was kind of funny. We also get to see where Jamie went off to. He went to help the phrase take back a castle that was taken by Blackfish, who was a Tully. So Jamie just walks in with the reintroduction of Braun. Braun is back. I love Braun. He's still funny as fuck. Giving him a pile of gold, a lordship, and all this shit just for helping Jamie out. And obviously, the Freys don't have their shit together, so Jamie and his soldiers have to whip him into shape and really help him take this castle back. Jamie assumes command, and things are going to start rolling. No battle yet. We might get one, but we also see him talking with Blackfish in kind of a parlay sort of fashion, where Blackfish tells Jamie that he's pretty disappointed in him because he was expecting a little bit more from the Kingslayer if, you know, the rumors were to be true about Jamie and the stories about him really lived up to who he actually is. So hopefully, further in the line, we'll get a battle at um, this castle front with Jamie and the Tullys with the phrase, but not 100% sure. It seems like um, Brienne's gonna end up showing up is according to the preview. So, I mean, you know, I guess we'll just see what happens with that. On to the two biggest points, and I'm starting to realize that I always say, let's, well, we're gonna see what's gonna happen with that or something like that. Uh, sorry to keep repeating myself. Arya Stark, uh, finally leaving the fucking faceless men, thank God. And she just seems to be meandering around and minding her own business. Um, just finding freaking Westeros, just finding Westerosian, I think is what she said, Westerosian ships and just giving them money. Like, hey, I want a cabin to get back home. And they're like, all right. She's just wandering around. This old lady walks up to her. And it's the chick. Rips her face off and stabs her twice. Gotta admit, I was very surprised by it. Was very surprised to see her get stabbed, but I wasn't really surprised that that, that happened because it was kind of obvious. The old woman kind of walks by like, excuse me, and then just <laughs> stabbed. She falls off a bridge. She's alive for the moment, but is Arya gonna die? I don't think so, but you know what? You never know. The next episode could start off with seeing her corpse in a freaking, uh, in an alleyway. But yeah, it was super sudden and really fast, but yeah. Is Arya Stark gonna die? Probably not. Maybe, but probably not. And of course, the biggest thing about this episode is 
the hound is alive. They've been dwelling on this subject was if the hound was alive or dead for about two seasons now. And God, it was so great to have the hound back. Hound's one of my favorite characters. I think he's awesome. And while his story wasn't exactly the most interesting or the most action-packed or anything, it served its purpose. He's back. He wanted to kind of get away, live a life of peace, but he's being dragged back in for one last thing because apparently the gods have something in mind for Sir Gregor Clegane. Yeah, this is the part that had Ian McShane, and unfortunately this is the only episode Ian McShane's in because they kill him and they hang him. But yeah, like I said, most certainly not the most interesting story. It's cool to see the Hound back. It's always great to have the Hound back. I'm just so happy because I'm so glad that he's alive and well and walking around doing his thing. So yeah, I know I just kind of went rapid fire with all the stuff that happened this week. There's just not a ton to talk about. Stuff happened, there are things to talk about, but it's not stuff I could really articulate. Not articulate, but really go in depth with. Overall, decent episode. I think it was better than last week because there were some big reveals like the... the, the because there were some big reveals this week like the Hound, Are You Getting Stabbed, stuff like that. So yeah, overall, I think this was better than last episode. Certain had its ups and downs. I think a lot more ups in this case because I genuinely thought last week's episode was rather boring. So I'm going to give this episode of Game of Thrones a 7.5 out of 10, maybe an 8. This episode's a little iffy for me because there was a lot of cool stuff in it, but there was certainly some eh, some mulling around. I don't know, I feel like this is one of those episodes I could flip on a dime for me whether I like it or not. 7.5 seems very fair for right now. So yeah, guys, if you liked what you see, you want to see more, you can subscribe to my channel. Every week, Game of Thrones. I know it's just kind of been Game of Thrones for a bit. I haven't really been able to get a chance to go out and see any movies. There are plenty I would like to see, like Apocalypse, uh, Ninja Turtles just came out. I would really like to see that probably sometime this week, maybe, hopefully. And if you want to support the channel, you can give my video a like. You can comment what you thought of the Game of Thrones episode and how you're thinking of Season 6. I ask this every week, but I keep on asking. And also share all that jazz, and hope you liked what you guys saw, and I will see you guys next time.